noticed a man in a suit sitting at a nearby table. The man was staring at him intently, his expression unreadable. Detective John's instincts told him that the man was not to be trusted. He quickly finished his coffee and left the cafe, but he could feel the man's eyes following him. He decided to confront the man, hoping to get some answers. But as he approached, the man pulled out a gun and pointed it at him. Who are you working for? The man demanded. Detective John knew he had to think fast. He tried to reason with the man, telling him that he was just a detective trying to solve a case. But the man wasn't buying it. Just as the man was about to pull the trigger, Detective John saw his opportunity and lunged at him, knocking the gun out of his hand. The two struggled, but Detective John managed to overpower him and pin him to the ground. He searched the man's pockets and found a badge belonging to the organization. This confirmed his suspicions, the man was working for the organization. As he walked away from the scene, Detective John knew he had to be more careful than ever. The organization was closing in on him, and he had to stay one step ahead if he wanted to succeed. But he was determined to see this through. He had come too far to give up now. He would continue to gather evidence and expose the organization's operation, no matter what it took. Chapter 5, Allies and Betrayal Detective John had found himself in a difficult situation. He knew that he couldn't take on the organization on his own, but he also knew that he couldn't trust anyone. He had to find allies within the city, but he had to be careful not to reveal too much about his investigation. As he walked through the city, he kept his eyes peeled for anyone who might be able to help him. He tried to blend in with the crowds, but he couldn't shake the feeling that he was being watched. He finally found someone who seemed trustworthy. Her name was Emma, and she had been a resident of the vanishing city for years. She had witnessed firsthand the disappearances that had plagued the city, and she was eager to help Detective John in his quest. Emma took Detective John to a hidden location where she introduced him to a group of people who were also investigating the organization. They had been working in secret for years, trying to find a way to bring down the organization and put an end to their sinister plans. The group was led by a man named Marcus, who had been investigating the organization since his sister had gone missing several years ago. He had recruited a team of experts in various fields to help him in his quest, including a tech genius, a former intelligence agent, and a master of disguise. Detective John was impressed by the team's skills and expertise, and he knew that they could be valuable allies in his investigation. However, he couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. As he spent more time with the group, he began to notice small inconsistencies in their stories. He started to suspect that someone within the group might be working for the organization. His suspicions were confirmed when he was ambushed by a group of thugs while he was alone. He managed to fight them off, but he knew that the organization was onto him. He realized that one of the members of the group had betrayed him. Detective John had to act fast. He couldn't trust anyone, and he couldn't risk being captured. He knew that he had to find a way to gather evidence against the organization and expose them before it was too late. He turned to Emma, who had remained loyal to him throughout his investigation. Together, they devised a plan to infiltrate the organization's headquarters and gather evidence. As they set their plan in motion, Detective John knew that he was risking everything. But he also knew that he had to stop the organization and save the missing people of the vanishing city, no matter what the cost. Chapter 6, Showdown at the Headquarters Detective John had spent weeks gathering evidence against the mysterious organization that was responsible for the disappearances in the vanishing city. He had uncovered the nefarious plans to create a new world order and control people's minds with advanced technology. Now, it was time for him to put a stop to their operation once and for all. With the help of a few trustworthy allies, Detective John had managed to track down the organization's headquarters, which was located in an abandoned factory on the outskirts of the city. It was heavily guarded, with armed security personnel patrolling the area and cameras monitoring every corner. Undeterred, Detective John and his team devised a plan to infiltrate the building and take down the organization's leaders. They spent hours studying the layout of the factory, identifying the weak spots in the security, and preparing for any contingency. Finally, the day of the operation arrived. Detective John and his team donned their bulletproof vests and armed themselves with the latest weapons and gadgets. They approached the factory under the cover of darkness, making their way through the shadows and avoiding the guards' attention. As they entered the building, alarms started blaring, and lights started flashing. The guards had spotted them, and the fight had begun. 
Detective John and his team fought their way through the building, taking down guards and avoiding booby traps as they made their way towards the organization's leaders. It was a grueling battle, with bullets flying and explosions echoing throughout the factory. Detective John's team suffered some casualties, but they managed to push through and reach the organization's control room. There, they found the leaders of the organization sitting behind a bank of computers, monitoring the city's inhabitants' brainwaves. Detective John confronted them, demanding that they stop their operation immediately and turn themselves over to the authorities. But the organization's leaders refused to comply. They laughed in Detective John's face, revealing that they had a failsafe in place that would erase all evidence of their operation and white people's memories of the vanishing city. It was a race against time. Detective John and his team had to stop the organization before it was too late. They engaged the leaders in a brutal fight, using all the skills and weapons at their disposal. Finally, Detective John emerged victorious. The organization's leaders lay defeated on the ground, and the control room's computers were smashed beyond repair. Detective John's team had succeeded in their mission. As they made their way out of the factory, the sun was just starting to rise over the horizon. The vanishing city was no longer under the organization's control, and its secrets had been exposed. Detective John and his team had saved countless lives and prevented a disaster that could have affected the entire world. They had truly become heroes. Chapter 7, The Truth Unveiled. Detective John emerged from the chaos of the headquarters with evidence in hand, his heart racing with a mix of adrenaline and relief. He had faced insurmountable odds, but he had done it. He had taken down the puppeteers, exposed their nefarious plans, and saved the missing people. As he walked out of the building, he was greeted by a sea of reporters and flashing cameras. The news of the puppeteer's downfall had spread like wildfire, and everyone wanted a piece of the hero who had brought him down. John had always preferred to stay out of the limelight, but he knew that this was important. He had a responsibility to the people he had saved and to the families of the missing. He stepped up to the podium, ready to address the crowd. Good evening, he began, his voice ringing out over the cheering crowd. I stand before you today not as a hero, but as a man who was simply doing his job. He went on to recount the events that had led him to the vanishing city, the strange occurrences he had encountered, and the discovery of the puppeteer's operation. He revealed their plans for a new world order, their experiments on innocent people, and the evidence that had led to their downfall. The crowd was silent, listening intently to every word. They had always known that there was something strange about the vanishing city, but they had never imagined it was this bad. We owe Detective John a debt of gratitude, the mayor announced, stepping forward to shake John's hand. Thanks to him, we now know the truth about the vanishing city and can begin the process of bringing those responsible to justice. John smiled, feeling a sense of pride in what he had accomplished. He knew that his work wasn't done yet, there were still loose ends to tie up and more people to help, but for now, he was content knowing that the city was safe. As he made his way through the crowd, he was stopped by a woman who had tears in her eyes. Thank you, she whispered, grasping his hand tightly. My son is alive because of you. John felt a lump form in his throat as he looked into the woman's eyes. This was why he did what he did, to make a difference in people's lives, to bring hope where there was none. As he walked away, he knew that he had left his mark on the vanishing city. He had exposed the truth, saved lives, and made a difference. He was no longer just a detective, he was a hero. Chapter 8, Hero's Legacy. Detective John stood on the podium, looking out at the sea of faces that had gathered to honor him. He had never felt so proud and humbled at the same time. The events of the past few weeks had changed his life in ways he never could have imagined. The ceremony was being held in the heart of the vanishing city, the very place where John had uncovered the truth about the disappearances that had plagued the town for so long. The people of the city had come together to celebrate John's bravery and determination, and to thank him for saving their loved ones. As John listened to the speeches and accolades being heaped upon him, he couldn't help but think back to the night he had received that fateful call. It had been a simple case, or so he had thought. But as he had delved deeper into the mysteries of the vanishing city, he had uncovered a web of deceit and evil that had threatened to consume him. But John had not given up. He had fought with every ounce of strength and willpower he had, determined to see justice done and the truth revealed. And now, as he looked out at the grateful faces of the people he had saved, he knew that it had all been worth it.
After the ceremony, John was approached by several reporters and journalists, all eager to hear more about his incredible journey. But John declined, preferring to reflect on the events of the past few weeks in private. As he made his way back to his hotel room, John couldn't help but feel a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment. He had made a difference, and that was all that mattered. He knew that he would never forget the vanishing city, or the people whose lives he had changed forever. But even as he savored his moment of triumph, John knew that his work was far from over. There were still mysteries to be solved, and people to be saved. And he knew that he would always be ready to answer the call, no matter where it might lead him. For Detective John, this was not the end. It was only the beginning of a new chapter in his life, one filled with challenges and adventures that he could never have imagined. And as he looked out at the world, he knew that he was ready to face whatever lay ahead, with courage, determination, and the spirit of a true hero. Thank you for joining us at Short Story Central, your go-to destination for captivating short fiction. If you're craving more tales that transport you to new worlds, make sure to subscribe to our channel for regular updates on the best short stories from around the globe. Don't miss out on your next literary adventure. Hit that subscribe button now and stay tuned for more exciting stories coming your way only at Short Story Central.